Well, hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And as I was telling you yesterday, Balmoral Castle is open again for tours. And people were a bit worried about the price of entrance. It was about uh, 100 pounds. But just to make it clear, it's not that every single ticket is 100 pounds. It's that some of them are 100 pounds. If you want smaller groups, if you want more exclusive groups, the more you have to pay. But sounds fair, right? But regardless of that, the thing is that be, this has been so crazy that some of my rogues tried to buy a ticket and they met with eight or nine thousand customers in line. And I don't mean online. No, no, no. In line. Like, like, like waiting to get a ticket on Balmoral Castle's website. So it's no wonder that it had crashed because of that. You can imagine that the interest has been so high that I myself have been wondering, what if I take that tour? I don't know. I get to pay some kind of tour that allows me to do it on my own. I'm sorry, I am that kind of guy. I like to do things on my own, not in groups, and just live stream covertly the whole experience for, for you, my rogues. Because it is noted on the tour website that no photos or videos are allowed. So I don't want to know how Scottish prisons are from the inside. It is not my intention, but it will be fun nonetheless. I could imagine my bowler hat with a GoPro camera hidden inside just recording everything like Ralph Fiennes in that Avengers movie. No, no, wait. No, 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 not that Avengers movie, but that other Avengers movie. Yeah. Do you remember that one? But some of you would say, how are you supposed to get inside Balmoral Castle if the tickets must have been already been sold until 2027? I have an idea. You know that there's this saying that says that if you have a hard hat, a bright color jacket, and a ladder, you can enter pretty much anywhere. Because, well, security is going to assume that you are there for something, right? Fix the Wi-Fi, or the telephone, or the coffee machine. You just need a white band and all, all of this, and, and you're good to go. It has worked for Tom Cruise in like two Mission Impossible movies, so it, it should work for me as well. Now... I cannot run the same as Tom Cruise. That's a given, but I can try. All right. But whether if you're going to infiltrate a centuries-old castle or launch a very beige brand, timing is everything. And timing is something that Megan not only lacked, but circumstances could be completely against her in this one. She launched her lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, last month, and the timing of the launch coincided with mountain speculation and rumors in the media about the health and, and Catherine's uh, whereabouts. You know that uh, people became obnoxiously obsessed with a disappearance that just wasn't happening. So it's like Megan couldn't resist the temptation of launching Arrow just to uh, one-up Catherine's unintended headline tsunami. But here's the funny part. Some have questioned whether it was appropriate for Megan to move forward with her brand launch amidst the uncertainty surrounding Catherine's situation, e even if there was no such situation in the first place. That is called reading the room. A skill that Megan severely lacks, even if she's got 16 of those at home. To make things even worse, the launch occurred just hours before Harry made a public appearance at uh, an award ceremony honoring his late mother, Princess Diana. So critics have pointed out the monarchy evoking imagery using Megan's brand, such as her posing in a formal gown and the use of a gold embroidered logo, suggesting she's still leveraging her royal connections to promote her business ventures. But now, the actual problems for Megan began when Catherine revealed that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And, well, from a marketing and ethics perspective, there are questions being raised about whether it is appropriate for Megan to proceed 
with promoting her new product line at this time. Even if the diagnosis was not public when Megan launched her brand, it was known that Catherine was recovering from a recent surgery, indicating a potentially serious health issue. This creates a funny, uh, I'm sorry, difficult and delicate situation for Megan to navigate with her business going forward. Promoting home goods could appear very insensitive in light of her sister-in-law's cancer battle, no matter how many private kind messages she keeps sending through the mainstream media. It remains to be seen if, if Megan will need to delay or cancel some of her planned projects, like that upcoming Netflix cooking show, in order to avoid appearing unsympathetic during this time. Although, just an opinion. I don't think that Megan and the word unsympathetic mix very well. In fact, maybe Megan doesn't even know how to spell that word. But some of the challenges Megan faces appear to stem from uh, unfortunate timing beyond her control. But critics argue that she also bears responsibility for continuing to center herself publicly at a time when, you know, more sensitivity may have been warranted given the signs of Catherine's health struggles. But ultimately, Megan will need to carefully consider her next steps to avoid further controversy overshadowing her business and divorce. And boy, I'm sure she's going to sleep as usual, and that will be meme gold, guaranteed. But something that is not guaranteed for Megan is that she will continue to buy bots on social media to push her popularity artificially. No, no. Today, Elon Musk finally announced that a system purge of bots and trolls was underway. And why is Twitter or X so important, you might ask? Well, because together with YouTube, it's one of the most authentic channels to get information. And even if so many people say that they were going to leave at Twitter, they're still there because... They know that's where the cool people are. And that's why Megan can't stand to see Catherine trending on her own. And speaking of trending and influence, to put this in perspective, within the three hours after Catherine's video announcement, visits to the NHS Cancer Symptoms page skyrocketed by a whopping 373%. And that is more than double the number of visits compared to the same time the previous week. And we're talking about one visit every three seconds. Th that was wild. And that's not all. The day after the announcement, the NHS cancer page had five times more visits than the same day a week before. It just goes to show how much influence Catherine has and how her story is encouraging people to learn more about cancer. And some experts are hopeful that her openness about her diagnosis will raise awareness about cancer symptoms and prompt people to get checked out if something doesn't seem right. And as uh, Professor Peter Johnson from the NHS said, talking about cancer can literally save lives. And there's also a call for more research into how cancer affects younger women like Kate. Professor Nassanin Drakstan pointed out that younger women often have so much to lose and they might be working full time, have young kids, be the main breadwinner or be planning to start a family. Cancer can really turn their lives upside down, but there hasn't been enough attention paid to the psychological and social impact it can have. But, my rogues, I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And remember, much love and bliss.